Disclaimer. This video's information is being provided for informational, educational, and general interest purposes only. The information in this video is not intended to shock, enrage, or otherwise provoke the viewer. The sole purpose of this video was to raise awareness of true crime-related events. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Hey YouTube, I'm just here to let you know you need to subscribe to Crime Champs. It's my favorite channel on YouTube right now. And if you like true crime, you're gonna love this channel. So subscribe today. Warning. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. I wanna thank Mandu for allowing me to use this video before it starts. The description below includes a link to this video's original upload on Mandu's channel. This is one of the most unsettling and shocking cases I've covered. Be sure to buckle up and get your tissue. Let's get into the video. At the time, 39-year-old Charles Chuck Lahey entered a guilty plea to nine counts of oral sexual battery, four counts of sexual battery, one count of having carnal knowledge of a minor, one count of producing pornography featuring a minor, and one count of having pornographic material featuring a minor in his possession. A Vil Platt surgeon who admitted to sexually abusing children was given a 56-year prison sentence by a state district judge, who described him as hopelessly perverted and evil. According to the prosecution, starting in 1995, Lahey drugged the boys and then recorded himself molesting them on camera. Lahey's original 61 charges were reduced to the 16 counts to which he pleaded guilty. Bruce Roses, a state district judge, opined that Lahey should never be given another chance to harm children. Roses remarked, your evil condition cannot be cured. If you are freed, you will prey on innocent people once more. The judge was asked by Lahey's family and attorney, Mike Small, to include provisions in the sentence for treatment at some point. Larry Dilks, a defense psychologist, testified that Lahey was a link in a chain of sexual abuse. Lahey informed him that from the time he was six years old until his adolescence, numerous perpetrators had sexually and physically abused him, according to Dilks. Dilks claimed that the acts committed by Lahey against children and captured on videotape which the judge has seen but is being kept under seal appear to be reenactments of the abuse Lahey claimed to have experienced as a child. Lahey's victims, of whom 12 have been named by prosecutors, have a good chance of turning into sexual abusers themselves, according to Dilks. Brent Correll, the district attorney for Evangeline Parish, stated that his office would make an effort to track down those who are alleged to have molested Lahey so that the chain of abuse could be broken. Lahey addressed the court before Roses delivered his verdict. I don't need any compassion. I'm not putting myself at the court's mercy. Lahey declared, I want to be punished. Lahey declared that he intended to use his time in jail to make amends for his wrongdoings. I want to figure out a way to assist those who are in my situation. I only want that. Lahey declared, I don't want anything else. Lahey should have sought assistance, according to Roses, if he knew he had a problem. Keeping things a secret is safer. This is a problem because of the secrecy involved, Lahey said. It's the fear of losing everything, and I've lost everything, the speaker said. Roses claimed that watching the videos of the drugged victims sucking their thumbs in agony and crying out in pain and begging for Lahey to stop was like witnessing the crime firsthand. The videotapes were also all created for Lahey's perverted future enjoyment, according to Roses. He said to Lahey, no amount of treatment can change you. Lahey appeared sorry for his actions, according to Dilks, who has previously only testified as an expert witness for the prosecution. Lahey's personality and psychological history make him a strong candidate for successful treatment, but Dilks cautioned that there is no assurance he would never offend again. The estimated $400,000 price tag for an intensive treatment program had been offered by Lahey's family. 
many of Lahey's victims are currently receiving treatment. Lahey reportedly told Dilks that he would be interested in contributing to their medical expenses. Small filed a motion to appeal the sentence to the Third Circuit Court of Appeal as soon as Roses delivered the 56-year sentence, 46 of which are served without the benefit of parole, probation, or suspension. Small claimed that the judge failed to give sufficient consideration to mitigating circumstances and that the sentence is excessive because it is harsh and unusual. However, Lahey chose for Roses to impose the sentence because if he agreed to a particular sentence, he would forfeit his right to appeal, according to Small. The prosecution had also offered Lahey a deal in which they would recommend a 50-year sentence, only 30 years of which carried a no-parole provision. The family of two of Lahey's victims, according to a representative, is pleased with the verdict and the fact that Lahey will be behind bars and not able to harm anyone. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Give us your name and DOC number, please. Charles Lahey, 45 98 oh, Thank you. My name is Pearl Wise, and seated to my left is Mr. Roche, and to my right is Mr. Freeman. We comprise your panel this afternoon. Uh, let me explain the process to you. I'm going to read some information into the record. Afterwards, we're going to the interview starting with uh, Mr. Roche. After we complete our interview, we're going to ask the staff there uh, to update us as to how, whatever they want us to know. After we hear from the staff there, we have um, speakers here. We have um, Mrs. Shirley LaFleur, your friend. She'll be speaking in support. We have some opposition uh, Ms. Julia Dickin, the, aunt, the victim's aunt, she will be speaking. We have Ms. Teresa Weeks, uh, the victim's aunt, who will be speaking. And Ms. Catherine Gonzalez, the victim's mom, who will be speaking. We have another victim, Brian Gonzalez, who is present, but will not be speaking. Uh, so let me... Um, Read the information into the record, and then we'll uh, we allow it at the appropriate time. We allow all the speakers uh, to to make their comments. We, we appreciate uh, uh, their participation. So let me read your, your uh, information on the record. Your name is Charles P. LaHaye. DOC number is forty five ninety eight seventy nine. Your date of birth is October the eleventh of nineteen sixty two. You're listed as a first offender. Charges are sexual battery, nine counts. Sexual battery, four counts. Pornography involving a juvenile, two counts. Paul knowledge of a juvenile, one count. The total DOC sentence is 56 years. Um, your parole date is listed as June the 4th of 2022. You have a good time date of June the 14th of 2042 and your full time date of May the 19th of 2056. That sound correct? Yes, ma'am. Right. It's, we can answer Mr. Rose. Thank you, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> Is the correct pronunciation of your last name Lahey or Lahey? Okay. Madam Chairman, we have Mr. Charles Lahey. Uh, he's 59 years old and he's been incarcerated for about 22 years. Is that correct? About 20, yes, sir. And he has a 56 year, year sentence. He's only served approximately 39% of the judge's sentence. He has a good time date in 2042, about 20 years from now. His full term date is in 2056, some 34 years from now. He's only made eligible today by Act 122 of the 2021 Louisiana state legislative session. Mr. LaHaye, tell the panel this afternoon 
why you have been incarcerated for the last 20 plus years. Because I betrayed the trust of everybody around me. What did you do, Mr. LaHaye? I did things that most people don't ever want to talk about. And I did it to people that were vulnerable. And there's frankly just no excuse. Does that include sexual misbehavior with juvenile yes, sir. males? Yes, sir. Does that include embezzling trust funds from children also? No, sir. You were not prosecuted a bill for that, but it stated in my information that when the victim's father died, you scooped in and in the name of God, you were told to take care of his family. The part of that was management of a trust fund for his three sons. Is that, is that not true? Uh, there were four children, sir. But that, that is one way, yes. That is true. When yes, was were there four sons or three sons and a daughter? Three sons and a daughter. Okay. So, but the victims in this case were the three sons. Am I correct? Correct. correct. So, <clears throat> you were charged with 55 counts of illegal sexual behavior involving juvenile males. You pled guilty to 16 counts out of 55. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Nine counts of oral sexual battery, four counts of sexual battery, one count of pornography involving a juvenile, one count of causing knowledge of a and one count of possession of pornography involving human. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You, you got convicted of one count of pornography, but how many sec sexual photographs of uh, videos, and other sexual images that you have on your computer? I, sir, I don't know. The number was large. It's I, I never counted, though, to tell you. It was a large amount. My record says 8,000. Yeah. They also say that you are a subscriber to European sexual websites that involve juvenile males. Is that correct? That's correct. The last progress report, and I'm going to pull it up right now, Mr. Lachey. The last um, report states that you are married. Are you still married? No, sir, I'm not. Okay, you're divorced. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, it says that you are housed in medium custody. You have eight air write-ups, 20 plus years of incarceration, and you have a low risk assessment. It also says that you have a high school diploma, a college degree from LSU, and you have an MP degree from LSU Medical School in New Orleans, Louisiana. Is that true? Yes, sir. Uh, it also states 
that you did your residency in general surgery at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. That's correct. Okay. Yes, sir. How does an educated, intelligent man poop in like a vulture when your colleague died in an airplane crash in 1994 and take advantage of his family? That was not some plan from the beginning. I should have died in an airplane crash too. I was supposed to be there. I know it doesn't explore, it doesn't excuse anything, but with the best of intentions, as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And it just went downhill over time. And I don't care how much education you have. If, if you're damaged, if you're not well adjusted to how life is, it's anything can happen. Any, you know, anyone can go wrong. And I definitely did. So, Shane, an assertion was made that you medicated your colleague's wife so that her attention was diverted from her three sons and you took advantage of. I didn't medicate her other than what she was on before. I mean, that, I didn't. What, what led to her drug addiction and early death at the age of 46 years old? So that, that happened after I was incarcerated. But it started long before you were incarcerated. But drug addiction. Yes, sir, I would say that's probably true. What do you say about the allegation that you are purposely medicated to draw her attention away from the care of her children? No, sir, I never. That was never. Uh, programs that you completed, you completed anger management, HIV AIDS, uh, you completed all four phases of your sex offender treatment. Um, let's focus on your sex offender treatment now. What did you derive from your sex offender treatment that you didn't know at the time you were committing your crimes. I thought that no one could feel like I did, or no one could act like I did, until I realized that a, a whole program is built around people who actually do feel that way. Okay, what did you learn about the victims? that I just never considered how they would think until it was too late. So, Sheikh, according to my information, some of the victims were never identified by you, and we don't know exactly how many victims were involved in your 55 counts of sexual misbehavior. Today is the day of honesty. Let's be honest. Yes, sir. We need to victimize all three of your colleague's son. Sons. No, sir, not the last one. 
It may involve his two older children. His two, yeah, his two older children. It involve any of their first cousins. Yes. It involve friends of your victim. Yes. How? It's an estimate. How many victims do you think was involved in your sexual misbehavior? Seven, eight. I, I really, I, I mean, eight, I eight, nine. No, I, I, yes, sir. So, so basically, you be treated this activity until your wife discovered the pornographic pictures on your laptop. And it reported to the authority. Am I correct? Correct. Have you ever had any issues with drugs or alcohol? No, sir. No history of drug abuse or alcohol abuse? No, sir. Tell us about your transition plan. Where do you plan to work and where do you plan to live? Well, right now, I would, I would return home to my parents, to the house where I was raised. The Nathan Bill plan? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any employment lined up? Not at this time, no, sir. My really, my first concern is my parents. In the last year since the pandemic, have really uh, been very in need of help, sort of to get things done. What means of support do you have for yourself in that in your life? The finances of my family are, are adequate to support me, and then I would also want to find employment once I get out, in, either in the medical field or in the last 15 or the last 20 years, I've been doing adult basic education, and I seem to be fairly successful at that, too. This is a shame. I don't know if you are aware, but full-time employment is a requirement why you on supervision? Right, and I would be definitely be fully employed. I'm not somebody to sit around and do nothing. One uh, go along. Uh, do you have any comments, remarks, observations? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you know his institutional record is is impeccable. He's done a lot of things. Uh, he's a he's a he's a model offender here. Uh, I guess my only concern is uh, his risk management and sex offender treatment was 17 years ago when he took it in 05. And, uh, you know, I, I would be remiss not to say that I, I just, uh, he has failed to, uh, to show me that he has remorse uh, for what he's done uh, in the pre parole hearing and, and today. <laughs> It shows all over his his uh, answer, his visual, and I I got the same impression. There's no remorse, and there's no empathy for the victim. Uh, Madam Chairman, thank you, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Charles. You uh you you indicated that the education had anything did not have anything to do with this. Uh, did, did it start with you watching pornography? Uh, probably, yes, ma'am. What, what age did you start watching pornography? Oh, uh, as a teenager. A teenager. So what would you say to anybody who's watching this today? What would you say to them about the danger of pornography? Oh, it's definitely a gateway. It definitely... 
desensitizes you to 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 things without a doubt. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you for answering my question. Uh, that's one here from Ms. Shirley LaFleur at this time. Yes, ma'am, what do you want us to know? Hello, um, I have known Charles Lahey since he was a, a boy, about 11 years old, and um, I, I don't know what happened to him in his youth to cause him to have these urges that he has had. Um, he is—he has always been a person who was caring and um, loving to his parents. He, um, he, he has always wanted to help other people and I think he has shown that while he's been incarcerated by the uh, work he has done with other um, inmates to help them to get their G GEDs and, and to change their lives for the better. Uh, his greatest concern right now is that his parents um, are failing their health, they're elderly and, and um, he uh, has a grave concern for them and and um, uh, would like to be able to go home to take care of them. Uh, I also, um, I, I think someone said that, that they don't see any signs of remorse. Uh, he, he, Charles and I have communicated over the years while he has been in prison and he has stated his remorse at times. He is a... a a self-contained, quiet person, and so I don't think that 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 remorse is that obvious to someone who doesn't know him well. But but he has um, grave remorse for the harm that he has done, and um, I think that um, he would um, go back and take care of his family. And they live on a family farm. And so certainly he would be fully employed just helping his father take care of the farm. All right, thank you. Thank you for participating today. We appreciate hearing from you. Uh, at this time, we can uh, we hear from Ms. Berlidia, um, victim's aunt. I'm so sorry for messing up your name. Hi, it's Jolie Bayon. It's it's French. It's it's complicated. Um, and I'm from North Louisiana, so you know what it does to me. Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Um, I I did send in a letter that you have on behalf of the Weeks and Ardwan families, and I do agree with the board when y'all said that this was uh, his time to be honest, and he is not being honest. My brother-in-law died in October of 1994. He started abusing my nephews in 1995. My sister met with Mark Correll, the district attorney, on this case, and she herself identified 12 victims. And then she had to come outside to vomit. I was not allowed in there with her because it involved minors, but she had to identify her children and several other children. To this day, she has never told anyone who those children were. He is the only one who knows, and Mark Carell, of course, because the records have been sealed. He's not honest. James Piker, the investigator who investigated this case, had a career over 30 years, and he said this was the worst case he had ever seen. He had nightmares about it. The judge who sentenced him called him an evil predator who was beyond redemption and could never be rehabilitated. He started abusing my nephews in 95, medicating my sister, which led to her drug addiction. So whether he was in jail or not at the time of her death and her continued abuse, he was the main contributor to that. And in my opinion, Opinion, and our entire family's opinion, he is solely responsible for her death. 
He's not even being accountable for the stuff we have on video. So how can you expect him to tell the truth about her addiction and the money he stole from my nephews, the blood money he stole from their father's death? I do agree with him when he said he was not thinking because if anybody was thinking, they would never commit such heinous acts. And his, his supporter wants to mention his parents and the community, but what about the community that he betrayed, the families he betrayed? We, we considered him family. Why does he have the option of parole? He's been in jail for 20 years. You know, my nephew's sentence for what he did to them, a lifetime. They have a lifetime to deal with the nightmares that they have. Joey is a heroin addict who is currently incarcerated due to this addiction for what he did to them. Jacob has been diagnosed agoraphobic. He is living with my elderly parents who was robbed of their grandchildren and their daughter due to what this monster did. When does my family get parole? When does Joey get parole? When does Jacob get parole? When does the entire community, get God, for God's sake, when does his family get parole? Parole his son. When? Tell me when does this nightmare stop? I, I know. I agree. No, stop. I, I agree with this monster when he told Mr. Bruce in court that he his words, his quote was, I don't want any mercy. I'm throwing myself on the mercy of the court. I want to be punished. Well, you know what? I want him to be punished. I want him to continue to be punished because you know what? He should have died that day instead of James because James was a good and honorable man and his children and his wife and our families never deserved this monster who preyed upon us. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I'm no. not sorry. I'm not sorry. And I hope he dies in prison because that is what he deserves. Thank you for listening to me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, Miss Teresa Woods. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm, I'm usually the more rational of the family. But he said something today that I need answered when he was asked if it was cousins of Joey and Jacob. I want to know, were my kids involved? Yes, Teresa. Oh, my God. Oh. Who? Who? Wait, stop to us. You have to stop to us and not to him. Stop to us. I just need him to say who. I just need to know. This has been 20 years. This that's it. Um, get with the victims coordinator and we can get that work done. This is not the forum for that. Thank you. I, I, I just agree with everything Jolie said. Chuck was my friend. I know. We, we spoke many times, numerous. He, he wanted to marry Lori. And I don't know if it was just to get closer to her kids. I don't know what the reason was, but but this has just been a, a nightmare. And and as Jolie stated, her kids will never recover from this. We can't even reach Joey. We try to put him in programs. He runs away. He's scared of everything. Jacob will not talk yes. to anyone but my my one of my sons. Yes, we got your letter. I want you to know your letter is in the file and we have read your letter. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Gonzalez. Yes. Um, I'm going to try. <laughs> I agree with everything that the girls said. <clears throat> Laurie was a very good friend of mine. And 
was addicted to codeine basically because of the prescriptions that she would get from him from chuck maybe he didn't physically write them but he didn't do anything about it he knew that she was getting codeine he knew that she had stolen prescription pads from him he didn't do anything about it in my honest opinion my opinion i'm not saying that anybody else has to believe this he knew he kept her drugged so he could have access to those boys i trusted him he lied to me he lied to my husband he made us believe that he was not a, a, a predator to our son. We didn't believe our son. We still feel guilty for not believing our son. He has never admitted to what he did to our son. Our son could not speak to you today because he doesn't think that he could get through it. And I, pro I mean, I know he couldn't because if I can't, he can't. We didn't believe him. He knows now that we believe him. But it took Chuck going to court. We should have followed through more. Chuck blamed it on him being jealous of our, our marriage because I'm not his biological mother, but I'm his mother. And Chuck manipulated the meeting we had with him. Even manipulated Jolie's husband because he was with us. Because he trusted Chuck and he was there to support him. Joey, Jacob, Janie, and Jordan all trusted him. And I want to refer back to a statement that he made. He said that his education had nothing to do with what he did. And I disagree. Nobody else other than a physician that had access to the hallucinating drugs could have done this to those kids repeatedly. Repeatedly. And they didn't know it. I don't know the exact name of the drug he used, but I'm suspicious and I'm very speculative that it was Versed where you don't know you're really awake but you don't remember anything that happened while that while you're underneath the the confines of that drug and while like we all said he's up for parole my son has two young boys that and a wife that have a altered life because of the way that their father thinks because the way that their father is worried about if someone else on the face of this earth will have access to his kids and do this overprotective can't play with certain people can't go spend the night with anyone anyone but family and the lack of trust that he had in me and his father that we regret, totally regret. But I'm sure you, the panel, can even imagine as a parent, if you have kids that you didn't believe your child and it was true, he didn't just lie about stealing a piece of candy. He told us the truth about someone touching him inappropriately, and we didn't believe him. I have to live with that. My husband has to live with that. Our son still has to live with that, even though we may have come to a point in our lives where we know we were wrong. He knows we know we were wrong. And he's listening, and I know he knows how much I love him. And I know that he knows that the education of this monster manipulated all of us, all of us. 
And I know, no, he didn't want to marry Laurie. Well, he did want to marry Laurie, Teresa, but I agree with you. It was to get access to those kids. And I am just so very thankful that that poor woman that did marry him did marry him. So he didn't have any more access. And God bless John. The only, him and J.D. are the only two children out of that family that are social interactive because the other two are incapable of it because of what they have been through incapable and joey i haven't seen jacob in years but i'm telling you right now joey is not even recognizable you wouldn't recognize him if he walked in front of you right now and just if i could have a second just to review my notes because i don't want to forget anything because this is so important it's I'm so important. He speaks of his parents needing him. With Laurie's death, those four kids became orphans. They don't have the option to take care of their parents. He shouldn't either. I, I'm pretty sure that should be enough for y'all. I want to thank you for allowing me this time to speak. Thank you. Thank you for being here and having the courage to speak. Thank you. All right, Mr. Uh, I guess your nickname is Chuck. Huh? All right, Mr. Chuck, is there anything you want to tell this panel before we render our decision? Well, ma'am, it's I'm not saying that education is a uh, I it sounded like as if education would be a, would prevent you from being or feeling or doing and, and education didn't do this. I did this. I failed. And I failed mainly because I could never deal with the fact that I was gay. And I could never deal with the fact that my experiences as a child probably affected me as well. And, uh, and the biggest mistake was never telling anybody when I had a chance, when I was young, and and the reason I may not feel remorseful or I may not show it is because, frankly, words words are not adequate. Words are not adequate. I promise you, if I could die today and make all this go away, I would gladly go. It, I just can't, though. Every All I can do is try and do, because words are not going to fix this. All I can do is every day try and make something a little bit better. And that's what I do every day. You can ask him. Every day I get up and I go to school and I try and help somebody else. Because it's, it's because it, it is. I'm overwhelmed at what I did. And I don't know what else I can do, either dying or trying to do something a little bit every day. I just don't know what else I can do. And I've asked other people's life, and, and I, I just don't. All I, I can't tell you how sorry I am. But just saying that's inadequate. It, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't change anything. I'm sorry. I didn't. I, I, I don't know what else to say or do, ma'am. I, re, I really don't know. If I, I could, but if I could die today, and it would take care of all this, just as the judge said long ago, the bleeding had to stop somehow. I agree. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Are we ready to vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Belichick. Mr. Belichick, I'm going to tell you my routine. I in person, I listen to the interview of my colleague, and then I make a decision. I make my decision before the victims speak because oftentimes, the victim's testimony can get very emotional. And I don't want to make a decision based upon the emotional testimony of the victim. So my decision on your case was recorded on my laptop long before the victims had a chance to get their testimony. 
I just wanted to let you know that basically I'm making a decision on information that I received and read in the interview with you this afternoon. Mr. LaHaye, based upon overwhelming express opposition from the legal community, the judge, the DA's office, the sheriff's office, the chief of police in your jurisdiction. A statement opposing your release from your former wife, who's fighting, who is fighting for her safety and the safety of her son. You have opposition from the victim, the victim's family. The age of your victims is another reason I'm denying you. You took advantage of pre, in some cases, pre juvenile male victims. The nature of your offense is horrendous. And quite frankly, Mr. Lachey, I think right now you are a risk to public safety. For all those reasons, I'm going to deny your request for early release. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, first off, I want to thank all of the victims that showed up to testify today. I, I, I'm, I can't imagine, I and mean, I do have children myself, I cannot imagine what you are going through. Um, but I have seen many of families, I was director of probation for 35 years, and I've seen these type of offenses just ruin great people. So, so, so hang in there and, and back these kids as best y'all can. Well, they're not kids, they're grown up. And uh, Mr. LaHaye, I, I have to agree with Mr. Roche. Uh, I, I'm going to deny you for a little bit. Sir, at this point, you have two denials. Uh, I concur with my colleagues. My vote is to deny as well. Uh, a lot of my decision is based on the information that was gathered today at this hearing. Uh, I want to commend you on the work that you're doing, helping people get their high, high set. I, I want to urge you to continue to do that. I want to urge you to retake the sex offender treatment program and, and just retake it. And, and maybe you go in touch with who you are. Uh, there was an indication that uh, that you need substance abuse treatment. There was some indication somewhere about that. So explore that. I know, but explore that further. You deny any kind of drug use. I think I read that. You not that. So be it. But today, sir, uh, you've been denied. Best yes, wishes to you. Thank you.